Hello guys, it's Shinkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So for today's video we actually gonna talk about the i5-12600K. <laughs> so recently I made a poll in my community tab that you can see if you go to the community tab and the poll was about several frequencies to be tested with the i5-12600K. In this case, I gave you several op I gave you several options, sorry, uh, and you pick the tw the 2666 megahertz versus 3200 MHz versus 3600 MHz versus 3733 MHz, okay? So you've picked those settings and I'm doing it. Simple as it can be. And there's a reason why I'm making this video because some people will completely and time after time say things like, "Oh, uh pick good RAM for Ryzen CPUs because on Intel CPUs it doesn't matter, low RAM is completely fine and blah 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 blah. Bullshit. It is not fine at all because if you have low frequency RAM you will have low performance even on an Intel CPU and this video is basically just to prove that to some of you, okay? Once again as simple as it can be. And well, let's get the bullshit and let's go finally to the results of several RAM frequencies on the i5-12600K DDR4 RAM frequencies, okay? Let's go, right after the sponsor of today's video. For today's sponsor we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16 and using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Today's first game is CSGO, using the usual very low settings so you can be insulted at a higher frame rate. And like it is usually thought, CSGO isn't very RAM dependent, even though it is CPU dependent. And although we get higher average FPS by using higher RAM frequencies, the difference is very small taking in consideration that even at 4K we're over 450 FPS. Strangely enough, 3733 MHz seems to have lower results compared to 3600 MHz with loser timings, which is very strange, but happened every time I retested. Overall, the only frequency suffering is 2666 MHz and in the higher resolutions instead of the lower ones. Even more interesting. The second game is Far Cry 6, and now we finally can see the results scaling pretty well. At 1080p we have a decent difference of 11 average FPS going from 2666 to 3200MHz, with higher 1% lows as well, and this time the 3733MHz brought us better averages than the 3600MHz, as it should. At 1440p we start getting GPU bottleneck and that is why the averages are getting closer and at 4K at around 80 FPS even the 2666MHz kit will suffice. Now
Now it goes to Recon Breakpoint and one of the most absurd results I've ever seen so far in all my CPUs and RAM testing. At 1080p and 1440p, we actually have the 3200 MHz RAM performing the best. Then we have the 3600 MHz in the second place and in the end we have the 3733 MHz with lower timings that should outperform all others getting outperformed in every resolution by even 3200 MHz CL16, performing even worse than the 2666 MHz at 4K, due to the way lower 1% lows of course. This is something that I can't explain apart from the fact that we need software to mature a bit more for older Lake CPUs. Who knows, very odd indeed. Now we have Rainbow Six Siege using Vulkan API and high settings. In here we have once again a pretty decent scalability with anything over 2666 MHz offering a substantial performance boost over it. This at 1080p of course, since at 1440p and 4K even at over 300 average FPS with GPU bottlenecked. Overall, great results for all kits. Following now with Detroit Become Human, one of the most spectacular games I've ever played. If you're into futuristic games with amazing narratives, you should definitely play this game. We're here using Vulcan and high settings and this is one of the games I knew it was very RAM sensitive due to previous testing. We can clearly see that in the results as we have very nice scalability, apart from 37-33 MHz results once again, where we had lower 1% lows than the inferior 3600 MHz CL17 frequency, which is odd. At 1440p the 1% lows were the same and at 4K all the results are within the margin of error. Getting closer to the final line we have Need for Speed Heat, another title well known for being poorly optimized, which means it is great for CPU testing and RAM testing as well. We finally can see a clean scalability at 1080p and 1440p where we are completely CPU slash RAM bottleneck. Going from 2666 to 3200 MHz gives us around 10 average FPS and 7 FPS in the 1% lows while going from 3200 MHz to 3733 MHz gives us once again around 10 average FPS more and also higher 1% lows. So in this particular title we have a difference of around 20 average FPS from the lowest to the highest RAM frequency, which is around 15% difference and will definitely make a difference for people with higher refresh rate panels. This, of course, if you are not GPU bottleneck. The final game tested is Civilization VI using the X12 in the graphics benchmark. Before anything, take these results with a grain of salt since the earlier version of MS Afterburner couldn't even read the FPS on this game properly with the 12600K. It was reading the FPS doubled or something like that, so it might still be a bit bugged. Here we can see that the 1% lows are kind of locked. And I know that because even the R5 3600, which is vastly inferior to the 12600K, could easily achieve over 130 FPS in the 1% lows. In this game, with the exact same settings. So I would like to tell you something like, let's focus on the averages instead, but even those results are a bit sketchy. 
and I kept this game here to show you that some games just can't be properly benchmarked yet and not only due to the CPUs themselves but also due to the benchmarking software still not completely supporting the Alder Lake CPUs. So guys, conclusion, what do you think about the results that you've seen before? Well, I can tell you right away that some of the results are kind of strange. Mostly the 37, 33 MHz results, which are, like I told you before, strange. Yeah. And I believe this is due to the, to the bias being in really, in a really, really raw state because the older Lake CPUs have been recently released, like some months ago, and the bias still needs to mature because it is a new architecture. And we all know that the older Lake CPUs have lots of troubles going into high frequencies, even on DDR4, okay? Which is the case. So, yeah, I guess at 37, 33 megahertz, I guess that some games won't perform as well. And I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that it is stable. The frequency is stable, the timings are stable, and the IMC, the CPU IMC, is stable as I've tested them all and that's one of the reasons why this video took more than it should, okay? And still, the results are messy, I tested several times, the results on Ghost Recon Breakpoint are messy, we have way lower 1% lows, while in some games the results are pretty satisfactory, with the 37, 3300, with the 37, 33 megahertz, um, with lower timings actually having the results it should have with higher averages and higher 1% lows, when in CPU slash RAM bound scenarios, okay? Like Need for Speed, Far Cry, and so on. As for the others, I guess, it is just a matter of bias updates and they will be fixed, I assume. But as it took with Ryzen CPUs, it will take time to mature. And so far, 3600 MHz with the lowest timings possible is the way to go. And this because every CPU will be able to make 3600 MHz with a decent RAM kit, or 3733 MHz, some motherboards can do 4000, but well, 3600 MHz will be the sweet spot for every person, in my opinion, and you just go there, pick that frequency and reduce the timings as much as you can. For example, instead of CL16, you can try, for example, CL14. And that will bring you even more performance on the 3600 MHz frequency. So, yeah, that's the best you can do right now for the older Lake CPUs, in my opinion, of course. And according to the tests that you've seen. But let's not ditch the 3200 MHz because 3200 MHz, CL16, 18, 18, 18, 38 will be completely fine. This frequency and timings are the most common presented in cheap 3200 MHz kits. So you can buy those for cheap and still have a well-performing CPU. Of course, you won't have the top notch, but the CPU will still perform very well. And you won't have to spend as much as in other kits. So it is what it is. And well, that's all for today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. Leave your like, leave your comment in the comment section because I really want to know what you think about what is the best frequency slash timings for these CPUs in terms of price performance. In my opinion, 3200 MHz it is. In terms of the performance sweet spot, 3600 MHz. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video. Oh,